Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss an overview of My Test Case Manager. To download this free Excel tool, click the GitHub link in the comments below at any time. All material is Creative Commons license. This means it's free for you to use, extend, and distribute. First up, what is My Test Case Manager? My Test Case Manager is lean. There's just five tabs in the standard template and three columns for the test cases. It's simple and clean. I've spent 22 years leaning this out. The pictures to the right are from TCM Test Case Manager that I built in 1999 for my little freeware company, Pierce Business System, way back in the day. And that was a fairly thick app, a lot of buttons, a lot of functionality. There's a half dozen reports and another five or six screens that I'm not even showing and multiple language support and all kinds of stuff embedded in this app. It was a thick app. Then in 2010, I built TCM Lite, which was an Excel, a lot thinner app, but there was still too much going on. It's too busy, too many columns. It just takes your focus off what's important. So it was a big step in the right direction, leaning things out, but not quite enough. And in 2021, I built my test case manager, which is a much lighter version and lets you focus on what's important, writing the test cases and communicating the results. My test case manager is flexible. You can have 10 test cases, 100 test cases, and if you really want to, all the way up to 5,000 test cases, well, that's probably not recommended. It's all in Excel. It's easy to modify, and it's low tech. There's no code and there's minimal formulas. It's just straightforward and simple to use and simple to modify. This is a test case management tool. You use it to organize test cases, track test case results, track test cycle results, and use the reports for communication. Now, I'm gonna go off script here and I'm gonna jump on my soapbox. I need to emphasize just how important it is for you, and yes, you, no matter what level you're at, if you're the individual tester doing the work or a test lead or a test manager, you need to communicate the status, decisions, and issues you're working through. You really need to teach the non-testers on your team, the developers, the scrum master, project manager, et cetera, how testing works through cycles. You iterate while you're writing your tests, cases, you write a few, test, write a few more, test, and so on, iterating the whole time as you grow the test base up. Then, once you're done writing test cases, you iterate again. Every time you get a subsequent build, you need to iterate for regression. So, testing is never one and done. That concept, ah, you're always repeating some tests, skipping other tests, and, and you're flexible and fluid, and you need to be communicating what's going on when you're testing. You need to communicate that hey, these tests have been passing five times in a row and now it failed. Or, hey, I haven't had time to test these test cases and it's a conscious decision, I'm balancing the risk, I'm using qualified passes, etc. You need to be communicating all of that so that people can understand the scope of what you're doing, the risks and trade-off decisions that you're making when you're testing, etc. It's really important not simply just to write the test cases out and pass them, but to also track the status and track the cycles. Really important. And this tool is really targeted for small to mid-sized projects, not big projects with any testers. You can go buy a tool for that. This is meant primarily for small UAT testers tracking their own work or one-off testers working on small to medium-sized projects. That's the target. But you could stretch it to fairly big-sized projects if you really wanted to, but at some point it's going to get brittle managing all those cases in Excel. So you be the judge of where the cutoff is, but the target is small to mid-sized projects probably in the range of 100 to 500 test cases. But you can go all the way up to 5,000 if you really wanted to, and you could go beyond it. Just copy and duplicate the spreadsheet five times 5,000, now you have 25,000. That's extreme, but if you really wanted to, you could. Next up, when to use My Test Case Manager. It's good for traditional functional testing, what's generally performed by the QA engineers or in IT testing, and it consists of things like integration tests or end-to-end -end tasks or UI tests, basically the top part of the testing pyramid. So I've used it, the template, heavily in, across multiple companies in the traditional functional testing role. But I'm planning on using it for UAT testing in my current role. And that is testing performed by end users or business analysts, etc. And it consists of testing the business rules, acceptance tests, having test scenarios, having test data, etc. Typically happens in stage or PPMO, depending on what you call your environments. But you can track your UAT testing this way as well. If you've ever seen presentations by James Bach or read James Whitaker's books, then you may know what exploratory testing is. It can be performed by anyone and it consists of tours through the application under test. You learn as you go, you design the test cases as you go, and you execute as you go. 
and we'll discuss later in this presentation, but I firmly believe you can use my test case manager as a trigger to enter flow state while you're in tour mode because there is minimal technical interference. It just works really well. You focus on what the tour is and you're just blasting out the test cases as you go and flowing right through the application. And it really works well for exploratory testing. Next up, who should use my test case manager? As the my and my test case manager implies, this tool really was designed with a focus on the individual contributor. Set in standalone mode, running on your PC or laptop, you use it to better organize and communicate your work to those around you, and you use it in the 10 to 20 to less than 300 test case range. That was the primary target user. However, small teams with two or more testers can use the tool fine too. You can use it to better coordinate and communicate the team's work. You can put the Excel file in shared mode, and you can use 300 to 5,000 test cases. Next up, why use My Test Case Manager? My favorite reason to use the tool is to write tests from a flow state. Huh? What's a flow state? Well, you've probably heard of it as being called in the zone, where you're fully focused and immersed and concentrating and you're fully energized and your mind is open to and sees all the connections and you're really productive when you're in a flow state, very productive. You're just focused and knocking stuff out at a deep level. It's a great state to be in. If you've ever written papers and get in a flow state, you know what I mean. If you've ever done certain sporting events and you get in a flow state or the team gets in a flow state, you know what I mean. There, you're, you're in the zone. Everything is gelled. It's a fantastic state to be in. And I like using this tool because for me, it's a trigger to get to flow state. So we're going to discuss that. So part of the flow state is all the inputs coming in, assorted inputs from all kinds of different directions. And one of the things that's nice about this tool is you're not distracted by technical technicalities and other stuff going on. You have a simple tool and you can focus on what's important. Understanding what the application under test and writing test cases and thinking about how things may break. You're, you're really in deep concentration mode and you're not distracted by a bunch of stuff that's not important. You have a simple tool and you're focused on what you're testing. And the next part of flow state is that because you're not distracted, a higher percentage of your concentration is going to creativity, identifying connections, identifying patterns, noticing differences, applying past experiences, making observations, applying past knowledge, doing trial and error, doing experimentation. Just you're, you're highly focused and concentrating on what you're doing and not distracted. And that yields nice clean outputs, all aligned, simplified, refined down to the most important, highest priority, simplest execution paths, etc. So that, that's kind of in a nutshell what flow state is. And how you trigger flow state is by using exploratory testing. You're designing at the same time as you're writing, at the same time as you're testing, and you're focused on one tour at a time, and you're just working your way through the app, eyes wide open, noticing everything, deep concentration, pounding out, grinding through the test cases. And then you stop when you're thoroughly gone through it, put on a different, different tour hat, and proceed back through the app again. Another reason why you should use My Test Case Manager is for better communication. I'm going to run through several examples here. Example number one is to justify test cycles. Show that there's a first test cycle that had 35 test cases and you're ultimately going to end up with 130. Show that there's a second test cycle and a third test cycle. Show that you're writing test cases as you get more functionality each sprint and as you get builds with more functionality and as you have time, even if you could write all the test cases right now, it takes time to write them. So show how you're writing some cases, cutting a test cycle to run and execute those test cases. You, you wouldn't want to wait all the way out to here to start executing your test cases because a month might go by. It's better if you can write some, execute them, write a few more, execute them. So show your team, justify that test cycles are important. You, you don't just sit down and in two days write 120 test cases. It takes time and you got to organize the approach. And even once all your test cases are written, you still have to execute against new builds that come out with bug fixes and unblocked features that you can test, etc. So show the fails are high at the start, red, and then it tapers off. Show the blocks are high at the start and they taper off. Basically, the bads taper off and the goods improve. Show them that. Show them that test cycles are important because stability comes as you apply more test cycles. Testing isn't one and done. So use this tool to communicate that. Example number two, show how long the next test cycle is going to take. You'll see in a future training module, 
that once you've written the test cases, you go flip a bunch of them back to to do for the next subsequent test cycle. And you know, because you have historical metrics, like in this case, there's six test cases in the to do bucket. Last time it took 0.6 hours to execute them. And then there's two test cases in the failed bucket and three in the qualified pass. So I know that to re-execute all these, it'll be 0.9 hours to execute those 12 test cases. So it's nice to be able to communicate that to people and, and to be able to do trade-offs and say, well, we can save 0.1 hours by skipping these three test cases. We know they passed two test cycles ago, and if we're okay with living with that risk, we can save 0.1 hours. And obviously, as you get more test cases, there's more horses to trade. Maybe this is 3.5 hours and you can get a build out today and get it tested and released if everyone agrees that the risk of the qualified passes is okay. So on the test cases page, you'll see later, make use of this graph, make use of the execution times and use them to plan future test cycles and compare back against prior test cycles. Example number three, I alluded to this earlier, qualified pass risk. If in this example, there's 130 test cases and 104 are qualified passes, meaning we did not test them this test cycle yet, we could, we could choose to do it, or we could choose to say, you know what, those qualified tests were run, spread out across the last three weeks in the last five builds. It's okay, it's an acceptable risk, and we're only gonna test these 26 that are new or high risk, and we're gonna ignore these 104 and 80% of them because they're tested previously. So you can communicate that with the graph and show people, here's the risk, here's the time saved. I don't have this time shown here, but you could go to another graph and show the time that's gonna be saved. And you can, as a team, make better decisions by communicating what's going on, what you're testing, what you're not testing. I've seen across multiple companies, this information never gets communicated and people never have any idea what the decisions are, what the trade-offs are, what the risk is versus the time. They just have no visibility into that black box called testing. So it's really important to open that up and let the whole team see what's going on. And then the decision isn't all on you. Other people can sound off and say, you know what? We really should delay by one day and do 30 more of these qualified test cases, do all the highs, do the mediums, whatever, do all the tests in this area that are currently marked qualified because we had issues with them in the past, whatever. All those kind of decisions can be discussed if you're tracking them and breaking things down. And my test case manager makes it really simple to do that. Example number four for better communication. You can discuss how long test cycles are taking. In general, your initial test cycles, release one, two, three, they're gonna get longer and longer because you're adding test cases, you're running into problems, you're finding blocked issues and spending time falling down the rabbit hole trying to dig up details on them. So typically test cycles get longer, then at some point they break and they start to get faster. You're done writing test cases. Your, level, your count's leveled off. You've conquered the learning curve. You're getting two, three, four, five times faster executing the tests. And you even have some qualified test passes where you're not running the test cases. So you'll see the test execution cycle time drop way off. And you can show that and discuss that and people can start to plan around that. And example number five, releasability. You should have some kind of agreement or standard practice that says you never release showstopper defects. And in this example, there's test cycle or test run number one, two, three. There's all these open showstopper defects, two of them, three of them, three of them, two of them, and then they taper off. And then you get towards the end and there's no showstoppers, but maybe there's one open allowable defect. But you can use this chart to show what your defect status is. And I've even seen it used where <clears throat> they'll say, hey, we have to have the final build and we do a test cycle, a complete regression test cycle, run all the test cases on it, no qualified passes. And we have to have plus two days of exploratory testing on it. So if you really want high quality, you can batten down the hatches and, and do that. Full test regression, every test case run has to pass and uh, no showstopper defects come up, plus two days of exploratory testing on top of that. So you can use this to show, you know, oh, we did maybe two releases and there's nothing showing up. So it's interesting graph and you can use that or modify it to implement an idea that's similar. And finally, what is the license? It is Creative Commons. 
And that means it's free to use, free to copy, free to alter, and free to distribute. Just mention Data Research Labs, if you would, and you don't have to, I'm not gonna go check, but if you would, that's great. And I'm happy this tool is useful for you. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the left.